Hello, it's Stat 134, Lecture 28. Last time we were in Section 4.6 talking about the uniform order statistic. So remember that if you have n um, standard uniforms, um, IID, um, which are like throwing a dart at the, the interval 0, 1, then uh, u parenthesis 1 to u parenthesis n are called the order statistics, and these are just those, um, those darts uh, in order. And um, the probability that the kth order statistic is in dx, which is f of x dx, will allow us to figure out what the density of the kth order statistic is. And to do that, um, we, ha we throw k minus 1 darts between 0 and x, 1 dart um, at dx and n minus k darts um, between x and 1. So here I ignore the negligible dis, uh, distance dx. So um, the distance between x plus dx to 1, I just think of that as the distance from x to 1. So um, we were able to derive the formula for the density of the kth order statistic as shown. We then talked about um, the continuous joint distribution, section 5.1 and 5.2. And um, so the, the s s um, order statistics form a, a, f um, a rich family of um, joint, joint um, distributions on, uh, on, the, on the interval uh, 0, 1 cross 0, 1. <clears throat> and so, for example, you can ask what joint density f x y has variable part x squared y minus x cubed one minus y to the seventh on um, zero to one and x less than y here. So, um, so when we see the parts x squared y minus x one minus y um, and so on, we you're you're thinking to yourself, okay, x is going to be some some order statistic and and y is also going to be uh, a standard order statistic. So in this case, x is um, the third order statistic and y is the seventh order statistic. So great. Um, today we're going to talk about the beta distribution and calculate probabilities with the um, joint density. So the beta distribution um, includes the standard, the uniform standard or standard um, uh, I'm sorry, the uniform order statistics um, as a special case. So um, you can just see, so here's the definition of, of beta. It comes with two parameters, R and S, and you can see that it has the same variable form as as the order statistic does. And so um, matching up R and S, we see that R is K and S is N minus K plus one. And so the uniform order statistics are beta. Um, so in the appendix at the end of these notes, I show that, that um, if X is beta R S, then the expectation of X is R over R plus S. Take a look at that, it's pretty straightforward. So in particular, if x is ordered statistic, um, the kth order statistic, then we see that the expectation of x is k over n plus 1. And so it really makes sense that these order statistics are sort of a wave moving um, from left to right. So the, the, the expectation is 1 over n plus 1, and then 2 over n plus 1, all the way to n over n plus 1. So we did a concept test. This was um, fairly straightforward. Uh, so you throw eight darts at zero, one. The variable part of the joint density is the third order statistic, and y is the sixth order statistic. And the variable part is x squared, y minus x squared, one minus y squared. You can see that because um, if x is, is the third order statistic, it means that two darts get thrown um, before x, one dart gets thrown in dx, two get thrown between x and y, 
one get thrown in DLI, and two get thrown between one and between y and one, and that's exactly the variable part um, that that is circled here. Um, the second question uh, was whether six choose one four one y minus x to the fourth um, is a joint density function, and the answer is yes. Um, so you can see that here to have. Um, we're going to have a total of six darts, um, and x will be the first order statistic, and y will be the sixth order statistic. So then we just did a bunch of examples of um, calculating probabilities. So here, if x is the second order statistic and y is the fourth order statistic, and you want to find the probability that y is greater than 4x, so um, we first figured out what the density is, and then we did a double integral. Um, the first one, I think, is a better choice because it starts at x is 0 and y is 0. And I provide you details here, uh, so just check um, you know, that you get the right answer. Um, we then talked about independent random variables, so x and y are independent. If the probability that x is in dx, y is in dy is equal to the probability that x is in dx times probability that y is in dy, and that's equivalent to that the joint density factors into, um, into these sort of marginal densities here. So, um, great, great. Um, so an example, uh, x and y are IID uh, standard normal. Then the joint, the joint density here, which is called the uncorrelated bivariate normal, um, is the product of the two densities. So that's phi of x, phi of y. And so you can write out here what the joint density looks like. And um, I, this picture here is actually a picture for a correlated bivariate normal. You can tell it's correlated because the scatter plot here um, is tilted. It's not symmetric. Um, you would expect if it was uncorrelated that the green circle, the, the green oval there would actually be a circle. And you can see um, if you look at the density, the joint density here, it's symmetric in x and y. In fact, x squared plus y squared equals r squared is the equation of a circle. So, um, so the, 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 the uncorrelated bivariate normal um, it kind of looks like a, a liberty bell. So there's, there's sort of circular symmetry. Um, here's another example. X is exponential lambda, Y is exponential mu, independent lifetimes of two bulbs. Find the probability that the lifetime of, of the second bulb is greater than the lifetime of the first bulb. So, um, so here um, I found the joint density just using the fact that X and Y are independent. And um, so... Uh, we're looking at a double integral here. You can pull the e to the minus lambda x out of the first integral, which is with respect to dy. So x is a constant and pulls out of the integral. And um, I chose this order of integration because um, it's really easy to integrate something like e to the minus mu y from uh, y is x to y is infinity. So uh, this was a fairly straightforward calculation. You get lambda over lambda plus mu. And uh, right, that, that makes sense. If lambda is equal to mu, you'd get a half. Um, here's another example. If x and y are IID standard uniforms, the probability that y is greater than or equal to a half, given that y is greater than 1 minus 2x, um, so here, let's just note that because x and y are standard uniform, the joint density is just 1 for x and y between 0 and 1. And, um, and using Bayes' rule here, 
we can recognize this probability as the area in of the purple um, divided by the area in the in the orange, right? So the um, the the probability here is the volume under under um, under the joint density, which is one. So because the joint density is one, the volume is just the same. It's just the area of the region. So we can just use basic geometry to to find the the area of the purple and the area of the um, orange, and you get seven twelve. Um, this calculation here of of the expectation of beta um, just follows from the definition, so I don't think you'll have any trouble with this. Great, have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you on Monday.